In this tutorial, let's take a detailed look at the Fluid Interactions module of the Fluid Lab add-on. And let's work on the interaction between a viscous fluid and a simple fluid like water. So in order to create an emitter for the viscous fluid, like honey, on the surface of the rock, we copy the rock mesh and we use remesh and boolean. Next, we want the fluid to appear to be at rest on the rock and be as still as possible. Then we will add a second emitter, in this case water, which will clean the fluid from the rock. For this, we will use the fluid interaction tool so that the particles of different emitters are affecting each other. So first, let's create a viscous fluid, something like honey. So for that, we need an emitter. So let's first work on creating an emitter. Let's head to solid view. And for the emitter, let's take this uh, rock mesh and let's duplicate it. And let's rename the rock mesh as something like uh, rock three honey. And to this mesh, let's um, check for the wireframe and let's add a remesh modifier. And let's uh, hide the original rock mesh. And as we can see, the mesh is very dense. So let's reduce the mesh density uh, by increasing the voxel size to something like 0.5. Looks okay. Let's add another modifier, which is going to be our shrink wrap modifier. And let's select the target as the original rock mesh. Perfect. Now let's apply both the modifiers. Cool. Now let's add a cube. And let's go to X ray mode. And let's increase the size. And we're going to do a Boolean between this cube to the honey mesh here. To get our emitter. So for that, let's um, go to edit mode first and let's subdivide this cube a bit. And let's give it a subdivision of something like 10. And let's add a displace modifier. And let's, um, let's click on add new texture. And let's go to textures and let's change this to clouds. Let's get the X-ray mode turned off and let's increase the size. Looks good. Now let's head to the object properties and under viewport display, change the display as from texture to bounce. Let's move this up in the Z direction just a little bit. Now let's select the rock honey mesh. And to this, let's add a Boolean modifier. And here, let's select uh, the object as the cube. And let's uh, click on intersect. There we go. Let's apply the modifier and let's delete the cube. And let's hide the plain mesh for now. And let's go to edit mode. And let's delete the faces. There you go. Looks cool. Now let's add a solidify modifier. And with the offset in the positive direction. Let's give it a thickness. There we go. Now this is going to be our viscous fluid emitter. Something like honey. Let's apply. Perfect, let's bring back the rock mesh and let's bring back the plane. Now let's scale this rock honey emitter slightly so that it's slightly larger than the rock mesh let's say by 1.03 as a first step let's add colliders to the rock mesh and the plane so let's select the rock mesh let's head to colliders module and let's add selection collider 
Now let's uh, refresh the damping and let's give it a stickiness of 0.8 and let's increase the friction to 0.4 and let's give it a random friction as well. Something like 0.2 and let's head to plane mesh and let's add selection collider to the plane mesh as well. And let's give this a stickiness of 0.4. Let's refresh the damping. And let's give it a friction of 0.2 and random friction of 0.1. And let's save the file. Cool. Now let's select the rock honey mesh, which is going to be our emitter for the viscous fluid. And let's add new group. And let's select inflow. And let's add emitter. And under emission, let's increase the count to 50,000. And let's reduce the particle size to 0 0.04. And we want all the particles to start at a particular frame. Let's say frame 15. So let's give it the frame start as 15 and also frame end as 15, as we want all the particles to start emitting at once. And let's head to physics and let's increase the viscosity to 15 and let's reduce the stiffness to 0.2 and let's increase the drag and damping to 0 0.05. And let's reduce the time step to 0 0.02 and let's increase the subframes to 20 as this is going to be a viscous fluid. Now let's run for a few frames. There we go, we have all the particles at once. Looking good. Let's refresh the cache and let's bake the current cache. Under physics, let's also use the size deflect as this uses particle size and deflection. Now let's uh, bake again. Now that we have sticky viscous fluid, let's take a look. Now we can avoid few glitches in the simulation by clicking on adaptive here. So this is gonna automatically set the number of subframes. So let's click on adaptive and let's keep the threshold at 0 0.2. And let's delete the cache. And let's bake the current cache. We have to be cautious as clicking on adaptive takes longer time to bake. Let's take a look. Looks good, that's what we want. We want the viscous fluid to be present on the fluid surface before the water starts flowing. So looks good, let's save the file. Now let's work on creating the second fluid which is gonna be our water. So for that, let's add a mesh, let's add a plane and let's rotate the plane on the y-axis by 90 degrees and let's scale it down a bit. Let's head to top view and let's move the plane mesh a little bit. And in the side view, let's bring it down just a bit. There we go, that's gonna be our water emitter. So let's add a new group and let's add inflow. And let's add emitter. Now under emission, Let's change the count to 200,000. And let's decrease the particle size a bit to 0 0.04. And let's give it a frame start of five and end of 100. And let's give it a normal velocity of six meters per second. And then initial Z velocity of five meters per second so that there would be a steady stream. And under physics, uh, let's decrease the stiffness to 0.2 to make the water a little less chaotic. And let's increase the subframes to eight. Higher subframes enable more stable simulations at higher particle velocities. And let's play the simulation. All right, the stream looks good. So let's uh, toggle the fluid group for the water and the honey. And let's head to side view. And let's animate the position of this emitter just a little bit for a natural water look. So for that, let's um, click on auto keying 
And let's press space bar and then G. And there you go. So let's take a look. Let's uh, run the simulation and then take a look. All right, looks good. Now we can reduce this um, particle instability by using adaptive subframes. So we're going to do it in a bit. But first, let's smooth the animation of the emitter. So let's head to graph editor. Now let's add keyframes on every frame. So the way we can do that is by going to key, density, and then bake keyframes. So that's gonna add keyframes on every frame. And then to smooth this out, let's press Alt-O a few times. So that's gonna smooth the curve. There we go. Now let's um, toggle the fluid group for water and let's take a look at the animation. There you go, that's a nice smooth animation. Now let's toggle the water back on. And let's get to the first frame. And there we go. So let's take a look. Let's refresh the cache. All right, now that we have both the emitters, the honey and the water, let's um, head to fluid interactions. Let's first bring back the honey mesh as well. And let's um, free any bakes that must have been baked. And let's refresh the cache as well, just in case. And let's head to fluid interactions. And let's add an interaction. Let's add interaction between the honey group and the plane group, which is the water. Let's click OK. There we go. A fluid interaction has been added. And let's go to fluid settings and let's make a few changes first for the water under physics uh, let's ensure the mass of the particles is 0.1 and let's click on adaptive to automatically set the number of uh, subframes and by clicking on adaptive we have to be a little cautious as this will take quite a long time to bake and let's go to honey mesh and let's decrease the mass of honey particles to 0 0.08 so that they are pushed better by the water particles. And let's make sure the adaptive is checked on. And now let's save the file as fluid interaction. Let's press play. And one more thing before we bake, let's refresh the cache here is to change the viewport display to materials. So let's first uh, go to emission for water and under display material, under viewport display, let's change this to a bluish color to represent water. And let's ensure we do the same thing for honey as an orangish material. Cool, now let's play the simulation. All right, let's press escape and take a look. And let's um, current cache to bake. And we can see the honey particles being pushed around by the water particles. So that's the fluid interaction we were looking for. Now, in order to improve the look, what we can do is we can reduce the stickiness of the rock collider so that as the water flows on the rock, the honey gets pushed better. So we can improve the look of the simulation by animating the stickiness of the rock. So let's head to the colliders. And under rock, under animation, let's give it a start of one and let's give it the end frame of 40. And between these frames, uh, let's change the stickiness of the rock from the original 0.8 to 0.1. And let's click on Add. So let's take a look. Once we click on Add, here the keyframes will be added. 
and the stickiness changes from 0.8 to 0.1 between frame 1 and frame 40. So this would give a better simulation look. So let's uh, free the bake. And let's play the simulation. All right, let's take a look. And there we go. That's what we were looking for. Now let's uh, press current cache to bake. And let's um, save the file. And let's work on the meshes. Now first let's work on the honey mesh. So let's hide the water. Let's head to mesh. Let's add mesh. First let's add honey. Let's head to wireframe. And let's increase the resolution of the mesh by decreasing the voxel resolution. And let's smooth. And let's increase the min max. There you go. That's the mesh. All right. And for this mesh, let's head to shading and let's assign a material. And let's assign honey material. Set material. Let's take a look. And there you go. Perfect. Now let's select the plane, which is going to be a water. And let's head to mesh. And let's add mesh. And let's select plane and deselect honey. And let's um, head to wireframe. And let's decrease the voxel resolution to 0 0.03. And let's smooth it to something like 8. And let's increase the min max. All right, let's take a look in the solid view. And let's head to shading. And let's head to assigning for the plane, which is going to be a water mesh. And let's add water material. And let's click on set material. And let's head to cycles preview. There we go. So that's how we work with the Fluid Interactions module of the Fluid Lab add-on. Hope you like this tutorial. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials.